This video is about um, using Digilance waveform software to do um, transistor curve tracing using the tracer feature built into waveform software. Um, what's currently running on the screen here is a um, uh, curve trace for an NPN transistor and waveforms too. This is um, a 2N2222 NPN transistor. Uh, the way this is set up here, you can see you can select the transistor type over here. I'll show that NPN, PNP. You can also select diodes and FET transistors. Um, depending on the transistor type or the diode type that you select, there's a diagram that shows up here in the upper right, which is to indicate how this is to be wired. Uh, for your particular digital device, I'm using an Electronics Explorer board. So, um, obviously, Waveforms knows what kind of hardware you're connected to, and it shows you the diagram. So, in my case, uh, W1 and W2 are the arbitrary wave generator channels 1 and 2. These numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the scope channels. And then RC and RB are these resistor values that are going to be in line with the waveform. So basically, you're sending waveforms through resistors, measuring on either side of the resistor to get the current flow and the voltage drops, and then sending it through the collector base and emitter um, as necessary for the particular type of uh, transistor or diode that you're testing. Let me show that on my um, Electronics Explorer board what the wiring looks like real quick. So here we have it set up. Um, um, I'm indicating that this um, emitter base collector on this transistor here, this is an NPN. Uh, the face of the transistor is uh, pointed towards us. This is the uh, 100 ohm resistor over here. It's coming um, in line with the arbitrary waveform channel 1 through that resistor and then into the collector. On the other side of it, we go into scope channel 1 and then uh, wave arbitrary wave channel 2 comes in through the 10K resistor, goes into the base, and then on the other side of that, we're taking the uh, reading in the uh, scope um, channel three. And then the waveform um, outputs go directly into channels two and channels four. Everything's going into DC inputs, as in this case. And then um, the emitter um, is going to ground. So that's how that's wired. I have a whole bunch of transistors lined up here. Um, these are uh, NPNs over here, and then these are PNPs. I also have some diodes. And um, this, these are basically taken from uh, a pack of transistors, um, NPN and PNPs. And they're lined up um, basically like that. The NPNs are here, the PNPs are here. Uh, these will kind of jump around, but basically the order is this way. If you um, were to pick out the PNPs and the NPNs, these are the, all the NPNs and these are the PNPs. So we'll go back over here and we'll just take a look at... Uh, take a look at a couple of these NPNs. I'm gonna, just going to pull out that uh, 2N2222. That's the live curve trace right there. Pull that out, put in the next NPN, which is the 2N3904. And you get a different shape, obviously. The other thing that you can do, which is kind of nice, is you can keep track over here uh, of each of these as a reference. And you could even come in here and, and name them. Um, so you, you can name this, uh, whatever, we got 2N3904. So you can keep track of the actual um, curve that's being saved. And then you can compare that to, say, the next one that you put in there. In this case, that's the um, 2N4401. Um, I guess the, the, the way that people use that feature of, of keeping um, the prior curve on the 
on the plot is to um, match transistors. It'd be something good to do if you were trying to match transistors for, say, an audio application or something like that for channel A and channel B. Um, let's see. And I can switch here to I'll stop this and I'll switch to the PNP. Let me just clear this out first. Remove that one. Switch the PNP, right? Plug that in on my breadboard and then run. And there's a uh, 2N2907 PNP transistor. All right, and then um, you can also do diodes. So we'll come over here to diode and I will stick a Zener diode in there. And here's the diagram showing that waveform one through the resistor one into the diode and on off to ground. And let's see if I run this, what we get. So there we go. Um, we can change this voltage. We don't need to go to seven volts. So then we'll go for a diode. Okay, so you can see that at uh, 0.7 volts, you begin to get flow through the diode. And then it's fully engaged at 0.8 volts. Um, so if I wanted to see... In the case of this Zener diode, the breakdown voltage, I don't, I haven't been able to figure out a way to show the entire plot where it would go like this and then show the breakdown voltage um, or current uh, going in the negative direction. So what I'm going to do is uh, shut this off, reverse the diode on my breadboard. Its input is basically taking the arbitrary waveform one onto one side of the diode and off the ground on the other side as shown in this diagram here. Now I've got it reverse bias, so I need to change this uh, voltage level to 5.5. This is a 5.1 uh, reverse breakdown Zener diode. Now if I run this, now you can see it at 5.1 volts. It's, uh, yeah, it's um, breakdown has uh, been engaged. We've got uh, 2.6, almost 3 milliamps flowing through it. Um, so that's how you can use this to trace your, your, um, transistors as well as your diodes. And, um, I'll just show the setup here for that Zener diode and the reverse breakdown. Yeah, there's the Zener there. Got it wired in reverse. And, uh, that's it. Curve tracing with waveform software. Thanks for watching.